Hello, my name is Dominic Underhall House and welcome to another episode of Moonbreaker. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at a completely different style of list to the previous ones we've looked at on the experimental server. And what we've gone for is we have gone for a no cinder generation list. Now, you might be thinking it seems a little bit bizarre to you know, not generate any cinder when cinder is the only way to use abilities. But what we've done is we've put together a list where there's not many abilities whatsoever, and the ones that we have got only ever use two cinder. So, the list itself. We've got Maximus here, we've got Blindsider Esley, Beatrice Enforcer, Jailbreak, Crash is in here, however we're going to come back to that in a moment. Uh, you may notice that this is actually a different cost for Crash than it is in the gameplay. That's because I'm recording this intro after the fact and there's been an update in the last I want to say three minutes, so I'm recording the intro backwards. Crash is still seven at the time. If any of the other numbers are different as well, that's the same reason. I've got Hit and Run here, Drum Dance Tali, Shrapnel, Crosshair, and Broken Vengeance. Now, the way that we're going to be playing this list is to really take advantage of the fact that Blindsider Wrestling is now harder to activate because your Cinder generation, you, you can balance it out so you've got things to spend it on. However, in this list, we're only ever going to have two Cinder per turn. So it's really easy to spend it. You can just use captain ability, job done. If you've got uh, Drum Dance Atali on the battlefield, give him rapid fire, oh sorry, rapid fire, pummel, job done there as well. Or the last one is crash and just really just build up crash's damage. The one thing we will say is we can't actually use crash and Drum Dance Atali in the same turn, which is a fun little combo because we don't have the cinder for it. But personally, I think crash is powerful enough on his own. So we're gonna jump into some more games versus Brigham or Tom Bomb. And they've been kind enough to play a game with us, so it is only going to be the one game for now. And you'll see sort of me talking through that as we're playing. But honestly, I've had a few people recently ask me for shorter videos to see if there's ones they can fit in a little sort of bite-sized burst. And so I wanted to try a series of shorter videos. This will probably be the uh, the third of three, and so you'll be seeing this in a moment. And we can sort of try out you know, this different format and see if it's something people enjoy. So if you like it please hit that subscribe button, let me know in the comments if you think lists like this could work, <laughs> enjoy the video, head over to Patreon if you want to support us in that respect, and until then, I'll see you in game. Okay, we're about to load into our game, we are going to be trying out this no cinder generation list, and hopefully it should be a lot of fun. So, if you missed it in the intro, the whole point of this is that we're trying to be basically not, we've got no units here that generate cinder. We're trying to basically make actually find a way of using that as, to our advantage. And one of the ways in doing that is to use Blindsider Estley. I still love this intro. It really does feel great to me. So, because we've got Estley in there, having no Cinder is an advantage for us. Okay, so we're actually not out of the realm of possibility of just going pretty aggro early on. So we did miss that, but oh wow, look at that. Look at that stretch there. So what we're going to do is, because we've got so many things here that are just pretty cheap to deploy, I think we're going to go straight for the Esli combo, and just deploy Esli as far up as we can, with Drum Dancer Tali up there as well, and that should do it for us. So, like I said, the interesting thing about this though is that if we need to, we can just go for 4 damage by just pulling Esli forward. We've still got one spare leadership, by the way, which means we can play something bigger next turn, which is something I quite like, or we can play two two drops. Okay, so they're going for those extra cinder chunks, which means that this turn we just we play it a little bit safer, we play it a little bit slower. We're probably going to move up to the top and maybe play something like Crosshair, or we could even just go for Hit and Run and you know save another leadership for another turn and just keep going with that additional value. But honestly, as long as we're sort of still moving up the board a bit, Okay, that actually probably helps us a little. So we can, yeah, we can't quite get into range but necessarily because this is the maximum range. But if we have a grav disc, okay, we can kill that. Yeah, so I think what we're going to do is just going to move up here, we'll grav disc forward, shoot them. We'll probably shoot before we grav disc just to make sure we don't mess up our line of sight, whatever we're deciding to shoot. And then we can just clear this up with Esli, or depending if they play too many big things, we won't. And we'll just run away scared. I'm really tempted to just deploy hit and run back up here. We have you can tell we haven't thought out our leadership curve in this list yet. It could even be the case that we just go for a a one turn off and just really go for an early crash. I'd love to see crash in this. 
but Crash does work best with Astra, but also works really well with Slali, so could be whatever we feel like here. So the interesting thing here is we know we can get in range of that, but we also might be able to just get ourselves in range with a pull in this direction, so... Hmm, depends what we want to try. I think we're just gonna go for this first. They're looking to play something big next turn, so I actually think I just want to move forwards and play aggressively onto them. Because they haven't got any AoE, AoE yet. So if we just grab disc everything forwards, that uses all our cinder, gets Esli pumped up enough. Hopefully he doesn't doesn't get completely blocked in, I was about to say. So Talali can move up here. I was hoping there'd be an angle where we could get in range of this without being in range of both of them, but I guess not. So we're just going to push for this. And honestly, we just want to push forwards here. And let's figure out how the best way is to do it. It could just be play a, a really aggressive shrapnel. We could deploy a crosshair out. Do you know what? I actually think crosshair is a really good choice here because they're going to want to play something big now. And we've got loads of damage to head their way. And so this is what I was saying before about how you know, not having much cinder generation is now actually a benefit for us. Because we've now got access to just Esli being buffed up every single time. Now we could have had something in the list to try and defend him, which is obviously a good idea, but looking at this, we can throw so much damage into them early on, and you know, we can kill almost anything. Okay, this looks like maybe they're trying to block us in. Is this going to be like a... I was about to say a jailbreak, this could be. A sentinel. Okay. So... We can just ignore the sentinel is the fun part of this because I believe if we just kill everything here there's not really much to worry about. Okay, so that's going to be more of an issue. So let's just see. We deal 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We can deal 11 to it minimum and if we set off the mine that kills it. So maybe that's just our plan and deploy something like Beatrice further up or try and block them in place. In fact, Beatrice can be our mine layer. Because this is touching. Or we can just do things like this. Like so this has line of sight here with crankbait. Uh, with uh, crosshair rather. So crosshair. Still one to two extra damage. I'm curious as to what the best thing to do here is. I think we just Hmm. We'll go for this, try and get this as a big kill. 50-50. Okay, we got that, which is nice. Uh, honestly, I still think we battle frenzy this. I think this is the right play here. So we'll push this over here. We'll get our 8 damage in. And then what we can do is just try and split up a little bit. So, pop that over here. Send Talali in this direction. Let's go for that. Uh, Esli can actually become quite safe over here. If we need him to. And we can use something like... So we're not quite in range of Beatrice there. So I think what we might even do is just stop them scoring here with hit and run. So their sentinel is in a pretty good spot but we can deal four damage to it next turn pretty much no matter where they shoot so it might not even be worth their time to shoot especially you have to yeah so this is worth it but then they can't use anything else and we can just clear this out next time. Crosshair is going to be able to start putting some damage in I think hit and run as well. Okay, so Deadeye's just pushing for more Cinder. Yeah, I think we're in a good spot here. So obviously we're losing our big early damage push, but now we can play our two drops into four drops, and I think this is where we want to bring out something like Shrapnel, 
or we can just play two drops for three turns in a row. Or, I don't know. We need to figure out how we're going to save up the Cinder for Crash. Because I want to try and get Crash out this game. Honestly, if they don't activate, or if they use Deadeye, or if they don't you figure out exactly what they want to do, we're in a really good spot to just clear this up regardless. And to be honest, we're in a good spot anyway. We've got potentially enough damage to just straight up kill uh, Thingy. Deadeye here, if they, whatever else they play is in likely, sorry, is likely to be at risk as well. It is noticeable though that our backfield objectives, like holding these objectives, is something we can't really do, so we're just holding them to lower damage. Oh, sorry, sorry, to lower scoring, so that maybe in future turns we can do that, but we don't worry about it right now. So I wonder what they're uh, they're considering, because this mine is an issue for them. Okay, so I think our opponent realised that that was a. Uh, pretty awkward situation. We had so much damage on the battlefield and so much control that I think it was a it's going to be a real struggle for them to try and come back from that. Uh, let me bear with me. What I'll do is I'm going to leave the game and if there's any chance that they want to play one more I'll see if I can fit two video, two, sorry, two games into this video. If not we'll call it there and I'll come back with an outro in a moment. Okay so unfortunately our opponent had to take a little bit of a break there and I need to finish recording for now so we are just going to stick to the one game. However that was a very enjoyable game and I do think that the yeah, the introduction of this current Cinder system really does have a bit of flexibility. If we get more units like Blindsider Esley and things like that, we'll be able to do things like have lists that are designed to be running low on Cinder, but are going to be more aggressive because of the lack of it. So it's a really interesting balance. You know, you've got those Cinder generation lists, but they need Cinder generation units, and you've got the almost no Cinder lists, and they can just you know really put forward the pressure but lose out on that late game value. And I think that really gives a nice little bit of variety to list building. So let me know if that's something that you think is going to be the case, or if you think I'm wrong, I'd love to hear you know your opinions on whether this is good for the diversity of Moonbreaker. And if you do, let me know in the comments. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you can, and if you want to support me, go ahead and pop down to the Patreon. But most importantly, thank you for watching, and have a good day.